Hi and welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to do something very, very different, something I've never done before on this channel. Uh, so today I'm going to be reviewing a film. I usually don't do this, uh, but since I'm attached to the music of this film and many of you uh, actually are, I know, very attached with the music of this film. So I decided I just do it. Uh, so the movie I'm going to talk about today is 99 songs. Hey, gana kyo? So gana bana. Screenplay and direction is by debutant filmmaker Vishwesh Krishnamurti. Uh, music is by R. Rahman, of course, and the story also is by R. Rahman. Before any of you ask me what right do you have to comment on anything, let me just clarify that yes, I am commenting on a film. Uh, it's my opinion. It's very limited and restricted to my uh, limited knowledge and narrow uh, view of the world. Uh, so it will be coming from that. It's not a judgment of the film. It's not a critique of the film. It's just a review. Uh, it's just my opinion. And if you don't agree, you can, uh, you know, show your uh, discontent or your disagreement in the comments. I'm totally open to that. Uh, but I request you not to be rude or anything like that. With that being said, let's just get right into the review. Uh, so the premise of the film is very simple. Uh, guy loves girl. Uh, girl's father uh, doesn't approve. He says you can't make a living uh, just on music. So how will you, you know, uh, take care of my girl? So he asks him to make 100 songs. Uh, so he goes out, the guy goes out uh, in an attempt on this adventure to make 100 songs. It's as simple as that. Uh, but one thing I'll have to tell you about the story is that if it was this simple and they had put a lot of meat on this particular story, uh, it would have been much better. Uh, sadly, they go into all sorts of directions. Uh, when I was actually watching the film, I realized that if you have listened to every interview of A.R. Rahman in the past 10, 15 years, uh, you'd actually know the story of the film or you'd at least know why this film is being made. In a lot of his interviews, Rahman has talked about the fact that when he was growing up, musicians weren't looked upon uh, as, you know, uh, respectable people or musicianship was not a respectable kind of a profession. Uh, so you can see that in the film. Uh, then you can see some biases and prejudices within the music fraternities like jazz, classical. You can also see that in the film. Uh, there are a couple of myths. Uh, that, you know, musicians are this free-spirited, loose kind of people who only like themselves. That is addressed in the film. You can also see uh, this myth that, you know, artists and creative people often go towards drugs or alcohol and ruin their lives. There is allusion to that in the film. So all of these things, uh, you know, they've tried to tackle in the film. And that is where I think the story kind of, you know, thinned out. Uh, overall, the premise is really nice. And it is also very good to note that uh, in the story, Rahman has tried to connect all these various facets related to music. Uh, there are references to music companies. There are references to the process of making music. There are uh, references to some greats as well. I'll come to that later. Although these are the problems with the screenplay and not the story itself, I think the story has too much meat and it goes in too many directions uh, to actually pull out a very engaging screenplay out of it. There's one thing that is really to the credit of the screenplay and that is that the pacing is very nice. It is very tight. Uh, so the film runs around for two hours, uh, which is a very compact and decent length for a film of this nature. Uh, and, uh, you know, the film never lags so there is a new event or something that's constantly happening so it won't get you bored too much like there are places where it kind of still feels that what are you trying to say uh, but there is some event or something happening throughout the film so it doesn't really bore you now let me come to the reason as to why I watched this film. Uh, the only reason I watched this film is because I loved the album and I'm a huge Rahman fan so I wanted to know how they have picturized the songs and they have done a beautiful job with it. Uh, there are a couple of songs where they straight away pictureize it like a video, a music video. Uh, there are certain songs which are, come as a montage like a scene is going on and it's playing in the background. Uh, only a couple of songs here and there are really essential uh, to taking the plot of the film forward. Uh, one of the songs, of course, is the song that comes at the very end, which is O oh Ashika. Uh, the other songs always act as uh, background or even if they're lip sync, uh, they don't do much in moving the plot of the story forward. Uh, it's more like 
this guy is making these songs so we'll have to showcase these songs i won't go into much detail about the music and the songs because i've already done that so i've already done a review a two part review of 99 songs so if you want to take a look at that uh, you can find it on my channel i'll put it in the description down below so now let's talk about the references to the music world uh, there is a very definitive jazz portion of the film and i am a huge lover of jazz and i have trained in very rudimentary jazz piano uh, so i really love that portion so you get to hear uh, jazz standards the standards uh, that they are playing is summertime uh, it's a very popular jazz standard that has been covered by everyone but i think the version they have played in the film is a version by ella fitzgerald and louis armstrong uh, then they mention some great uh, jazz musicians like gershwin oscar peterson and all those people uh, it was lovely to hear their names uh, also uh, there's this jazz versus classical kind of thing happening in that particular part of the film which i really liked uh, then uh, you have uh, a gentleman in the film mention a fugue uh, which is a counterpoint kind of a thing where two melodies uh, go independently as counterpoint but each melody starts at a different time i've already talked about this in some of my reviews when they mention oscar peterson in the film they play c jam blues uh, which is a famous piece by him which i mentioned in the first ever episode of music recommendations on this channel so you can also go and check that out apart from jazz and classical references you don't find a lot of indian music references uh, although you can see a couple of instruments here and there and of course you can listen to the indian influence in the songs uh, but towards the very end of the film you see a very peculiar indian instrument which is called a swar mandal uh, a lot of classical musicians use it but it's not very common wanted to note that most of the film actually looks visually stunning most of the film i think has been shot indoors on a set that is on a sound stage uh, but it looks really pretty really beautiful uh, the female protagonist indulges into art so a lot of art that they showcase is definitely uh, cg and a lot of uh, visual effects has gone into that uh, whereas a lot of art direction uh, that has taken to uh, establish the jazz world or you know uh, this music world also works really well even on the musical equipment related stuff that they have shown in the film is pretty accurate so when he's composing they have shown a midi keyboard they have shown some logic sessions uh, the apple computer and a lot of plugins that people use to mix and master their songs it's all very real i think they have easy access to show all of that so it is not a big deal uh, even in the live setting wherever they have shown the pianos and the double bass and the drums everything uh, looks you know pretty accurate Now let's talk about the acting. Uh, the best performance, I guess, in the entire film is by the lead actor, whose name uh, Ihan Butt, uh, because his is the character that has been fleshed out a bit more. Uh, all the supporting actors do a great job, uh, especially the guy who plays his friend, uh, whose character name is Polo. He has done a great job. Again, he gets. a slightly more fleshed out character to play uh, you have stalwarts from the music industry like ranjit barot and rahul ram who play some uh, tiny but pivotal characters they are important characters and their presence adds a lot to the film uh, same goes for lisa ray and manisha kurala who come in pivotal but short supporting parts but still their presence itself adds a lot of believability to the film uh, the female protagonist i think uh, her name is adelsi uh, so she does a decent job but i think she's of south american descent so uh, they made her character mute so she can't really speak uh, so that kind of works in her advantage but she, even she doesn't get a lot of scenes to you know uh, perform but whatever she does she's okay i mean there are a couple of places where she kind of pulls you out of the film uh, but for the most part even her acting is pretty decent My only problem with the film was that the film actually begins out as a simple love story but that love is never really substantiated uh, so they never give us a back story or never give us a uh, proof that these guys are so madly in love uh, it never feels real that this guy would go through so much for this girl and uh in the second half it also seems that it's not for the girl anymore it goes into very different directions his relationship with his friend and there's a drug subplot thrown in and again there's 
uh, it comes back to the music and then rehab and a lot of things happen uh, it's all over the place uh, one more complaint i had with the film is that uh, if you're making a film about music a musician's journey uh, i am very thankful that you have depicted the music world pretty authentically but i would have liked to see the process of making one song in detail uh, we have this in some films like rockstar even in yuvraj we had a scene where uh, he has shown you how he came up with that piece how he came up with that song uh, so if you want to watch that kind of a film i would suggest a film called august rush so hollywood film uh, just blindly go watch that film uh, i mean not blindly with your eyes uh, just simply go and watch that film it's a beautiful beautiful film uh, that again the premise is kind of similar uh, a kid tries to reunite his parents using music but that has been done on a whole other level indian cinema will definitely get there uh, so rahman has done a very nice attempt earnest attempt for the most part the film is really nice i had a decent time watching it i wouldn't say a great time but there are certain things that i already told you which took me out of the film uh, mainly it was the writing uh, so yeah uh, i enjoyed the film overall but i might not watch it the second time so that's it for the review that's it for the video if you like this video please leave a like check out other stuff on my channel uh, i do a lot of music related content music reviews music recommendations if you like any of that any of that please consider subscribing i'm trying to hit 1000 subscribers if you want to tell me anything good bad ugly put that in the comment section down below or you could simply dm me on instagram you can find the handle in the description as well with that being said i'll take a leave bye bye